A good friend of mine was a church member, tried for years to teach me the gospel of eternal families. It wasn't until attending the Sao Paulo Temple Open House in October 1978, as I entered in the ceiling room that the doctrine of eternal families came into my heart. And for days I prayed to know if it was to know if this was what church was the true church. I was not religious, but had been raised by parents who were, and had seen what good was good in other religions. At that point in my life, I thought all religions were acceptable to God. After my visit to the temple, open house, I sought an answer through prayer. Having faith, and sure confidence that God would answer me, which was his church on earth. After a great spiritual struggle, I finally received a clear answer. I was invited to be baptized, which finally happened October 31st, 1978, the night before the temple, Sao Paulo Temple dedication. I realized that the Lord knew and cared about me as to answer my prayer. On well, next morning, my wife and I went to Sao Paulo to attend a dedicatory session of the temple. We were there but did not really know how to appreciate that wonderful opportunity yet. The following day, we attended the area conference. We had begun our journey in the church, and we found good friends who welcomed us during this life transition. The new members class we received in our Sunday's meetings each week were wonderful. They filled us with knowledge and made us wish for the week to pass quickly. So on, on Sunday, we could have more of that spiritual nourishment. My wife and I actually looked forward to entering the temple to have our family sealed for eternity. That happened one year and seven days after my baptism, which was a wonderful moment. I felt if the eternity had been divided at the altar between before and after the ceiling. Living legally on the east coast of the United States for a few years, I was acquainted with the cities, and they were mostly small. When I read or heard about the events leading, leading up to the first division, a crowd of people was mentioned, and this did not make sense to me. Questions began to arise in my mind. Why did the church have to be restored in the United States and not in Brazil or Italy, the land of my ancestors? Where were those crowds of mentioned people who were involved in revivals or in the confusion of religions, all of which was happening in such a peace, peaceful and calm place? I asked a lot of people about it, but no, got no answer. I read everything in Portuguese and then in English, but found nothing that could calm my heart. I continued to search. In October 1984, I attended the General Conference as a counselor in the state presidency. After, I went to Palmyra, eager to find the answer. Arriving there, I tried to understand why did the restoration have to be here? And why such a spiritual uproar? Where did all people mentioned in Joseph's account came from? Why there? At the time, most reasonable answer to me was because the U.S. Constitution guaranteed freedom. That morning, I visited Grandin Building, where the first Book of Mormon was printed. I went to the Sacred Grove, where I prayed a lot. There was hardly anyone in the street in the small town of Palmyra. Where were the crowds of people Joseph had mentioned? That afternoon, I decided to go to the Peter Whitmer's farm. And when I got there, I found a man at the window of the cabin. He had an intense glow in his eyes. I greeted him and then began to ask the same, those same questions. He then asked me, do you have time? I said yes. He explained that the lakes Erie in Ontario and further down the Hudson River were located in that region. In the early 1800s, they decided to build a canal for navigation, which would, 
would pass through the region. It stretched more than 300 miles to reach the Hudson River. It was a great enterprise for that time, and they could only rely on human labor and animal power. Palmyra was the center of some of that construction. They needed skilled people and technicians. Families and their friends, many people began to pour in from the neighboring towns and places further to, to work in the canal. That was such a sacred spiritual moment because I finally found the crowd. They brought their customs and they, their beliefs. When they mentioned their beliefs, my mind was enlightened and my spiritual eyes were opened by God. At that moment, I understood how the hand of God our Father, in his immense wisdom, had prepared his, in his plan, a place to bring young Joseph Smith, putting him in the midst of that religious confusion. Because there in Cumorah, the precious plate of the Book of Mormon were hidden. This was the stage of the restoration, where the Father's voice would be heard after nearly two millennia in a wonderful vision talking to the boy Joseph Smith, when he went to the sacred grove to pray and heard. This is my beloved son, hear him. There he saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description. Yes, God revealed himself to man again. The darkness that covered the earth began to dissipate. The prophecies of the restoration began to be fulfilled. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on, earth, on the earth, and to every kindred, tongue, and people. In a few short years, Joseph was led to, re to the records of prophecies, covenants, and ordinances left by ancient prophets. Our beloved Book of Mormon, the Church of Jesus Christ could not be restored without the eternal gospel revealed in the Book of Mormon as another testament of Jesus Christ even the Son of God, the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. Christ said to his people in Jerusalem, Another sheep I have, which are not of this fold. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, I am known of mine. When leaving the Whitmer's farm, I do not remember saying goodbye. I just remember tears running freely down my face. The sun was setting in a beautiful sky. In my heart was immense joy and peace called my, my soul. I was filled with the gratitude. Now I clearly understood why once again the Lord had given me knowledge and light. During the trip home, the scripture continued to flow into my mind. The promises made to Father Abraham that the seed all families of the earth would be blessed and for this temple would be erected so the divine power might be comforted upon man once again on the earth, so that the families could be united not until death do us apart, but together for all eternity. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mount of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. It shall be exalt exalted above all the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. If you who hear me have any question in your heart, do not give up. I invite you to follow the example of the prophet Joseph Smith. When you read in James 1 and 5, If any of you lack of wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. I bear witness that the Lord raise up prophets, seers, and revelators to guide his kingdom these latter days. In his eternal plans, families are meant to be together forever. He cares about his children. He answers our prayers. What happened in Comora was an important part of the restoration as Joseph Smith received the plate which contained the Book of Mormon. This book keeps us get closer to Christ than any other book on earth. Because of this great love he atoned for our sins. He is the Savior of the world. Of this I testify in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.